Hello guys, we are back with our next lecture. In this lecture, let us go through the concept of remote invocation, guys. Remote method invocation, sorry. It is nothing but RMI. Okay. So basically, this RMI, you can say it is a functionality or an API in Java, guys. So using Java virtual machines, you can communicate from one system to another system and you can call some other functions or methods from other system so that concept is nothing but a remote machine invocation okay so the rmi is an application interface application program interface that is nothing but api that provides a mechanism to create a distributed application in java it allows an object to invoke methods on an object running in another jvm so basically client can run something on server with the help of this JVMs, okay. So the RMI provides a remote communication between the application using the two objects, guys. So here we will be using two different objects, guys. We'll be discussing about their importance and what they do. Don't worry. So one is a nothing but a stub, and the other is nothing but a skeleton. So the stub is a nothing but the client side, and the skeleton is nothing but the server side, guys. So these are the things which help or which do the main thing. Okay. So first, let us go through RMI architecture. So basically it is having three different layers guys. Okay. So the first layer is nothing but a stub or skeleton. Okay. Remote reference layer and the transport layer. So these are the three layers which you can say. Okay. So the diagram will be in this way guys. Okay. So here is your client and here is your server. So client will be having his own JVM, client object, object stub, remote reference layer, transport layer. Here there will be a connection. It might be an internet simply assume that they are using TCP connection. Okay, transport layer, remote interface, sorry, remote reference layer, object skeleton and server. So basically the process will be continuing in the same way as in RPC. Okay, yes. So instead of the direct stubs, we are having the stub and skeleton. Okay, yes. So RM, I'll be discussing about the flow also guys, don't worry. So RMI uses a stub and skeleton objects for communication with the remote objects. Okay, so remote object is an object which who method whose method can be invoked from other JVM. So basically one can invoke other. So that is the main concept here, right? Yes. Okay. So now let us go through, sorry for that. So now let us go through stub. That is nothing but which is on the client side guys. Okay. So it is an object acts as a gateway from the client side. All the outgoing requests are routed through it. So if you observe here, so on the client side, it is there. And it is a mediator between all the layers, right? So whatever the, the user gives, it should pass through this stub and it should reach to the other end, right? Yes. So that's what it is written here. Okay. So the first step is nothing but it initiates a communication with the JVM. So stub is responsible for starting the communication. Okay. So it writes and it transmits the marshals. So basically the thing that you should remember is Marshall is nothing but some kind of encrypted thing guys. So basically in our previous lecture when we are discussing RPC, I told we pack it into message. So the function call is converted into message. So here we will be calling the same process of Marshall and unmarshal guys. Okay. So it marshals the parameters to the remote virtual machine. Okay. So these are marshaled okay and it waits for the result okay so it reads unmarshals the value so this is on the second part guys so here it is the first part and this is the second part if you observe here okay so it takes the values it marshals them it sends them and it waits for the response back and once the response is got it unmarshals them and it gives the result so this steps only be wrote in this uh, stub guys okay so in the same opposite way, you can write for skeleton also. Skeleton is nothing but server side. It is an object that acts as a gateway from the client side. All the incoming requests are routed through it. Okay. So the first step is nothing but it reads the parameters from the remote object. It invokes the method and remote object. Okay. So it writes and transmits the marshals data. So basically here you can add it unmarshals also. Okay, so just to give me a second, I'll be explaining you in this diagram only. So the whole flow. So initially the client requests for something, the stub will be receiving it and it marshals the data. That is nothing but it encrypts the data and passes it on and it passes through the network and it is received by the server side. So once it is received, it unmarshals the data and it will be doing the particular process and the result will be again marshaled. Okay, and it is passed through the service and here again, you'll be getting the unmarshaled data and again, you'll be getting the you will be unmarshalling the data and you will be getting finally data. So in this way, the exact flow is the same guys, but 
instead of packing and unpacking converting into message and demessaging it we are using here the marshall word that's it okay so i hope everyone got a clear idea on r m i that is nothing but a remote method invocation so in the next lecture we will be discussing about message oriented communication guys okay so how messages can be transmitted between the sender and receiver machines okay so let us meet in the next lecture thank you thanks for watching